Hi, I'm Pam, and I'm here to talk about spooky video games. I've never really done the Halloween thing in October on my channel before, but this year I was feeling in the holiday spirit, so I thought I'd go over some of the moments in gaming's history that have scared the shit out of me. To begin, it's the first video game jump scare that I can remember. It involves dogs and windows. In 1996, we got the first survival horror game, or at least the first game to officially use that moniker, Resident Evil. Mysterious murders are plaguing the outskirts of Raccoon City, and you're sent to investigate as part of a special task force. As you explore the hallways of an abandoned mansion, the game subjects you to awkward, nerve-wracking camera angles that rarely let you know what's coming up just ahead of you or around the next corner or just outside. It's quiet, then all of a sudden, a zombie dog jumps through the window into the hallway in front of you. You fight it off, slowly, and once you think you're safe, round the corner. Then, a second crash, another dog jumps from the other direction. Looking at this now, it doesn't seem that scary. But back when jump scares were not so abundant, it certainly made me leap out of my seat. After the success of Resident Evil, the survival horror genre really started taking off, and soon the PlayStation had another hit horror series on its hands. This one was a little more psychological. Silent Hill released in 1999. Here you play an everyman character who, upon waking up after a car accident, finds his daughter missing in a mysterious, fog-laden, and downright creepy town. When I first played this game as a teenager, I didn't get very far. Very early on, you add a radio to your inventory. It's supposed to be a helpful item, it lets you know when monsters are near but it does so by emitting a terrible static noise that increases in volume the closer a monster is. What's that? Huh, radio. What's going on with that radio? I did not enjoy this radio. never put that disc in the system again. Next is one of my favorite games that is an RPG, but it managed to nail the horror vibe in a particular hotel scene. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines was released in 2004 and has you playing a fledgling vampire in a perpetually dark Los Angeles that's full of supernatural creatures. The tone is spooky, and you visit some very creepy places, but it's a quest that takes you to an abandoned hotel, where it turns into horror. As you approach the ocean house, you can tell something is not quite right. That feeling is solidified when you make your way through the lobby, a chandelier crashes to the ground, and you fall through the staircase into a very scary basement. You find notes letting you know what has gone on here. After reading a note about a child's head being found in the laundry room, a washing machine door swings open. After reading about a man killing his family with an axe, you catch a glimpse of him through a row of water heaters. You're not in any real danger during this part of the game, but it does a fantastic job of keeping you on your toes. Light bulbs explode when you come near them, items fly off shelves and tables, doors creak open on their own, Evil laughs and scared cries are heard just off screen. 
It is a fantastic 15-minute horror segment. In space, no one can hear you scream. Unless you're on a mining starship that has air pressure and is inhabited by reanimated corpses. In 2008, a game took me to my favorite horror destination. Space. Dead space. After receiving a distress call, you arrive on the USG Ishimura, which seems to be abandoned. However, it's not long before you realize something else is here. Necromorphs, corpses reanimated into horrifying forms, all sharp, gangly limbs and gaping mouths. The first time you see them, you're behind glass, so you can only helplessly watch as most of the team you came with are killed. Then it turns on you. Unaware of how to fight these things at this point, you have no choice but to run, eventually getting cornered in an elevator. The next scare is from an adventure game about a very depressed lady who decides she doesn't want to live anymore, but it doesn't quite work out for her. (laughs) 2012's The Cat Lady is a surprisingly mature look at mental illness. When we first meet Susan Ashworth, she's just swallowed a bottle of sleeping pills. She looks forward to oblivion, but it doesn't come. Instead, she finds herself in a surreal world, which quickly turns from serene to horrifying, as she's told she can't die before completing a task. Susan comes across a machine in the dream world she's in, which has a sign that mentions something about a sacrifice. Near the machine, there's a hole, which Susan has to reach into. This scene is akin to watching a movie where someone drops their keys or something down the garbage disposal, and you end up watching through your fingers as they slowly dip their hand in, tempting fate to mangle their phalanges. Usually, these scenes are fake-outs. Not here, though. With a slam, a blade comes down, severing Susan's arm, the necessary sacrifice. The amazing music that plays after this eases the tension, but making that decision to put your arm in that hole certainly filled me with dread. The next game is scary pretty much all the way through, and it's scary for multiple reasons. In 2014, Konami released the playable teaser, also known as PT, for the upcoming Silent Hills game. The entire thing takes place in a single loop of a hallway, which repeats over and over, changing a little each time. It's hard to say what the scariest moment is. Honestly, anything with Lisa, the not-so-friendly ghost who haunts this strange journey, is terrifying. The biggest jump I got was when the bathroom door was open just a crack. But also, any time she just stood there looking wrong made my blood run cold. PT also demonstrates the horror of a lack of game preservation. When the Silent Hills project was canned, Konami pulled PT down off of the PlayStation servers. So unless you still have the copy originally downloaded a couple years ago, it's gone forever. Now that's scary. My last one shows how virtual reality has opened up a whole new world of scares in video games. In 2016, Until Dawn Rush of Blood was released. It's a rail shooter which is only nominally related to Until Dawn, using some familiar visuals. The scare factor jumps to a whole new level when you're hearing positional audio and seeing things in your peripheral vision. The biggest scare for me came right near the start of the game. Your cart takes you through an area where whispering is heard and figures are seen moving by. Then, you hear something on your left. Turn your head. Two scary ghost women are right there. 
The headset came off at this point. VR horror is a little too intense for me. So those are seven of the scariest moments that I've experienced in video games over the last 20 or so years. Please leave me a comment, let me know if you agree with my picks, if you have some other scary moments you want to share with me. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. If you're interested in seeing more games that are on the spookier side, check out my review of I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream, or Phantasmagoria. I also have a Patreon if you're interested in supporting my content.